Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Glad that you could join us again. Going to be in conversation with Dr. Bruce Clark this morning, CEO of Medicago, a biopharmaceutical company headquartered in Quebec City. Welcome to the program, Dr. Clark, and thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Now, I mentioned that you're the CEO of a biopharmaceutical company uh, in Quebec City. Give us a bit of your background before we jump into the topic. Certainly. I, uh, I've been in the pharma industry for about 30 years. Uh, worked in uh, a number of brand pharma companies on the, the branded side of the business, the biologic side. I've had some experience with uh, a generic company for a number of years, and uh, then uh, my fortune to be able to work with Medicago in the last uh, three years. I've been the CEO of this company. Now, I understand that, that you're a leader in plant-based technology. And uh, there was a recent announcement, announcement just uh, earlier this month that you had successfully produced a, a virus-like particle or a VLP of the coronavirus. Is that correct? That's indeed correct. That's right. right. Give us a, a bit of a, a timeline on um, how this came about. Sure. Um, we were, on our maybe just to give you a little bit of a, a view of our uh, company business, uh, we are, uh, we make, vaccines as well as antibodies in our in our system mm -hmm. and we have actually filed with the health regulators for our first product which is a, a quadrivalent recombinant uh, vaccine for seasonal flu so we've had a lot of experience with this uh, platform technology and uh, were able to when we saw what was developing with the covid uh, situation um, we were able to look at that, and uh, once we were able to obtain the genetic sequence for the relevant portions of that uh, virus, we were able to then program our system and produce the virus-like particles uh, against the uh, against the uh, strain of coronavirus that uh, is caused by COVID or COVID causes is caused by COVID, sorry. And, uh, and so we were able to get that done in about 20 days in our system. That's, that's one of the beauties of the system that we have is that it's very amenable to programming uh, to either produce, as I said, a vaccine-based product or an antibody therapeutic. Uh, it's very versatile and very capable. Now, as far as plant-based uh, technology for such a vaccine, I mean, uh, this virus is not a human virus it's a, it's an animal virus is that is that correct yes that's that's correct so how is plant-based technology going to circumvent the effects of uh this non-human strain so i mean interesting question so the the, <clears throat> the technology the, the plant-based technology that we use is really our production system for uh, biological molecules so what we do <clears throat> with our system is we uh, program the plant's basically production machinery for proteins and, and what have you to produce the what we want it to produce versus what it would normally traditionally produce. Mm -hmm. And the way we do that is we would take the relative gene sequences as we did it with this, uh, this COVID example, mm -hmm. and we would take those sequences and create a vector that we would insert into a, a bacteria that's, that's normally found in plants, so an agrobacteria, very benign bacteria, but that becomes our vector to insert the, the genetic material into the, the plant system. We do that under vacuum. We place the, the plants in a vacuum setting submersed in this solution that contains the bacteria and, and the, gen the vector that we're using. Uh, that basically is absorbed into every cell in the plant, and every cell in the plant becomes a little mini factory producing uh, proteins, which can either be in a vaccine form or, a, or an antibody form. But the interesting thing about this system is that when we program it, what it puts out is not just a, a native protein or, a, or a, a, you know, a simple protein. It actually creates a full, a full three-dimensional virus-like particle. So what does that mean? That means that the, the uh, proteins and lipid that are produced as a result of the genetic sequence that we introduce uh, form into what, for all intents and purposes, is a virus, except one important difference is it doesn't have any genetic material for reproduction inside, so it's not infectious. 
but to the <clears throat> it presents itself to the body just as a normal virus would, and thereby producing a defense against uh, against it. Yeah, that's correct. Exactly. What are some examples of plant based technology that have been as successful in, say, the seasonal flu or other types of uh, viruses? So we, there are <clears throat> some other companies around who have had. Um, some uh, early success with, with products mostly in the antibody uh, area. And, uh, during the Ebola crisis, uh, our company was approached by BARDA, as well as the Canadian government to produce the uh, Ebola antibodies uh, for use in, in, in uh, treatment of the disease. And there are a couple of other companies around that are at research stage uh, with, with this technology. We're the only company that has a commercial platform and a commercializable production uh, process. So not only can we bring this product into development, but we can also produce it. So we have a, we have our, our commercial facility at the moment is based in Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, we can produce of a pandemic type vaccine. We can produce out of that plant about 10 million doses a month. So <clears throat> when do you anticipate um, human trials? Um, so that's the that's the question everybody wants to know as well, and, and we do as well. As you can well understand that that is a that's a decision that is partly based on the data we generate, but also based on the requirements from the regulators. So the FDA or, or other regulators um, will certainly have an input into the uh, into the progress and, and strategy to fully develop this vaccine. Um, we have had good discussions with, with regulators to, to this point, and everybody is looking for ways to speed up the process. I think what's important, and your audience will appreciate, that one thing we've learned in drug development is that uh, you don't uh, take shortcuts. Uh, there are certain things that need to be demonstrated because, above all, we do no harm in, in what we uh, want to give to patients. Um, but we also, in this case, need to expedite the process to get this product available. So our, our best guess at the moment is we intend to have the first human studies in the summer of this year uh, and take the product right through phase three and into the into uh, be able to use in, in prevention uh, around the end of the next year. So i will say October, November time frame of 2021. Where can our listeners get some more information online about Medicago? Uh, they can go to our website, um, metacago.com, and on there we have uh, information about the plant-based technology, about our, our pipeline, our portfolio of products that we're working on, and uh, certainly information on the, the approach to the COVID uh, situation. Dr. Clark, thank you so much for joining us here on the program this morning. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.